Big one in the Big East. I'm pretty excited for this game. UConn hosting Creighton. Two teams that a lot of people believed in the preseason could potentially win a national championship. I think most people only believe one of these two teams can win a national championship at this point. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. I don't think UConn has fallen out of favor. I think Creighton has just a little bit through some of their early season, mostly non-conference performances. That UNLV game is just sticking in my memory of this Creighton team. But uh, after starting out 0-2 in Big East play, they've now won four straight. The schedule opened up a little bit. Survived against St. John's over the weekend. What are you expecting from the Blue Jays on the road in stores? Uh, I don't know. It's it's a game between the most consistent offense in the Big East and the most inconsistent offense in the Big East. Uh, Creighton can either put up 85 points on you or 65, and neither of those would be surprising. Um, I think given that it's a road game, I'm expecting UConn to win. My only hesitation is to make a commitment right now, and maybe I will by the end of this preview, to how much they win by, because this is a Creighton team that if they shoot 42 per 40 plus percent from three, which they're capable of doing can keep this one close. Um, I still think UConn's a better team, but, but you could see a game where it's, you know, 82 to 78 um, in, in UConn's favor. You could also see a game where it's 82 to 65 and, and, and you wouldn't be surprised. So um, I, I do like both of these teams. I think Creighton is better than their mid December, mid to late December run would suggest. Um, they still have, uh, you know, a, a good win over St. John's, a great win on paper over Alabama. Uh, they were able to beat Nebraska on the road, which was something that Purdue was unable to do. Uh, they won a shootout with Iowa. So this is a team that is capable of scoring and keeping up with UConn. Defense for Creighton has been fantastic for most of the year, even in the games that they lost. Uh, they only gave up more than 75 points once in those games. That was the UNLV game you were mentioning, um, which was basically a road, a true road game. I, I know it's I, technically, I think, a neutral site game, but um, it was a road game for, for Creighton. So it all comes down to can their shot makers hit shots? And I think on the road, it's going to be tough. Um, but again, we, we saw them on the road against DePaul and they put up over 80. We saw them on the road against Nebraska and they put up over 85. So, uh, they were on the road against Oklahoma state and put up nearly 80. So it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a game won by UConn either closer by a lot. Uh, and I don't know if there's an in between there. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of feels like there are just some teams, I think we talked about it with Kentucky, or maybe it was Ralph who said this, but uh, there are some teams that just play the game on their terms. It's decided on their terms. Really doesn't matter who the opponent is. They're going to sort of dictate how the game goes. And I think Creighton is one of those teams. Um, and that's not to say that it's necessarily because of how good they are or that they, they are the better team always. They're not the better team in this game. UConn is the better team. But I still think it will be dictated by how Creighton performs because when Creighton does what they want to do well, there's not much anyone can do about it. Uh, now, UConn, I think, is one of the few teams in the country that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Creighton's big three and feel pretty good about their answers in that spot. Uh, that is, of course, when Donovan Klingon is healthy. He hasn't played the last few weeks. So it, I don't know what the latest is on him. I'm not expecting him to play in this game from the, the quick research that I've done. Um, if he's missing from this game, it's a pretty large swing in Creighton's favor and maybe a game that Cal could dominate down low. Do you see it the same way? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I, I do think that uh, UConn is still going to have the advantage at at the point guard position, which is probably the most important. I mean, I one in the five are the two most important positions in college basketball. Uh, UConn will either have an advantage at the five or not, depending on if Klingon plays. But I do think that Tristan Newton being a top two point guard, top three point guard in college basketball, um, evens that playing field a little bit. And also the fact that even, even with Klingon out, 
I don't know if Creighton can overcome a poor shooting night. Um, they're not a good offensive rebounding team on the season. Part of that's the way they play. They shoot a ton of threes, uh, which almost neutralizes the advantage that you have down low on the glass to a certain extent. So even if Klingon doesn't play, I still think UConn wins this game. They've shown without Klingon that they are able to beat pretty much any team they play by, by a decent margin. I know it was close uh, against St. John's. It was close against Xavier on the road um, and close against Butler, which which stood out a little bit. But Butler's been playing pretty well this season as well. Uh, but when they're at home in their two home games – after St. John's, not against great teams, but they still won by 30 against DePaul. They won by 13 against Georgetown. Um, this is a game I think UConn probably wins by multiple scores. Okay. Yeah, I think on paper, that's where my head is at too. Um, I am intrigued by the backcourt of this game because – a lot has been made of Ashworth's struggles in the backcourt for Creighton. He was a high profile guy on paper and, um, you know, he just hasn't found his footing. I don't know if it's necessarily something he will find later in the season or not. It kind of just feels like it, he he's a level out of his comfort zone as far as what he's capable of. And I don't mean to say that to crap on the guy, but unless he's hitting shots, there's not much he brings to the game right now. And he hasn't hit shots the way he's capable of this season. Uh, now he ha has something to build on. He hit three threes in the St. John's game. Maybe we start to see that a little more here, but um, it, it's fascinating because I do think there's a lot of teams in the big East that Creighton can't hide Stephen Ashworth on. And look, Cam Spencer's capable of destroying better defenders than Stephen Ashworth, but he is a guy on paper I think you can stick Ashworth on and get away with it. And it, you have Alexander to match up with Newton. My strong suspicion would be that's the way they try to go defensively. I think that could work, and maybe you get in a, a game where you're kind of daring Cam Spencer to beat you one-on-one -on -one with Ashworth. Um, what would you do? If you're, if you're Creighton, would you – go the matchups I just went personnel wise, or would you do something different? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the backcourt because not only does UConn have Spencer and Newton, um, Castles looked fantastic the last four or five games. Uh, I know solo balls lost some minutes, um, and hasn't played a ton the last three, but if, if he's, you know, asked to play more minutes, we've seen him play well for UConn. Uh, you could make the same argument at the four for UConn. Like how does, because because for Creighton, it's, it's the big three plus Ashworth. What do they do at the four? We've talked at, at for, a while now about Alex Caravan and the mismatch he provides on both ends of the floor, positively on offense, negatively, sometimes on defense. I don't think that's that negative is, is as big uh, against guys like Mason Miller as it is against some other teams in college basketball. Um, the question becomes, you know, can they exploit the, will UConn just try and exploit their, their offense at the four and the two, um, is it going to be a big, is it going to be a big Camp Spencer, Alex Caravan game, or are they going to try and continue to play through Newton Castle, Klingon if he's healthy? Uh, it's going to be an interesting chess match, and I think in a game of interesting chess matches, I think I'd take Hurley in that. Mm -hmm. Just what we've seen. So I'm really glad you went there. Uh, I think the biggest strength biggest asset UConn has in this game is Hurley uh I think somehow a guy who's the defending national championship coach is somehow underrated at the puzzle piece moving that he does his offensive stuff is stellar there's always uh, it seems like there's one clip a week of some crazy thing that he ran that is just beautiful and genius on the offensive end um, it, he, I think he's navigated the clinging stuff pretty well like most teams you you lose your best player you know it's it's not easy to be 15 and two 17 games into the season, but he has somehow survived that. And uh, it's a credit to the roster he built, but it's also a credit to him. 
And I do think in this game, if it was a different coach, I would feel less confident that you're going up against one of the best teams in the Big East that's desperate for a resume win that can match up personnel-wise. But uh, I think maybe UConn has the biggest head-to-head match uh, match winner in the fact that their coach is who he is. Um, and that's no shots at Greg McDermott, who's a fine coach in his own, but it's something that if I have to pick one, I'm lining up with Hurley. Uh, last thing I just want to note, and then we'll do predictions. So I do, the more we talk through this, I've been very out on Creighton for a month and a half. I think I'm talking myself into Creighton in this spot. I think um, it, part of it is the questions with Klingon's availability and what I think Cal can do if he's not there. Another element of it is I I think deep down this Creighton team is just too good to not build a good resume. And right now their resume is not good enough. Like they, they have the Alabama win, which looks great as long as Alabama stays where they're at in the metrics. But everything else is not great. I mean, like Iowa, St. John's are their next two best wins. Yeah. Iffy, iffy to me. Colorado State was bad. UNLV was obviously horrible. Um, Villanova at home is one they're going to want back. I was impressed with how Creighton played at Marquette, which is a game I think you can compare to this one because Marquette's one of the top three teams in the Big East. They're historically very good at home. And Creighton showed up for that game. And Creighton led for much of that game. And I think sooner or later, they're going to get a big resume boosting win. This is one of the last big opportunities that they have. It's the until the very final game of the season where they're at Villanova. It's their last road game against a top 25 opponent. Um, I think I've talked myself into Creighton. And part of that is UConn's defense leaves a little bit to be desired. Like UConn is a team that sometimes wants to just outscore you. And uh, Creighton is not a team you should go into the game wanting to outscore. So uh, that takes me to my prediction. I'm going to take Creighton to pull the upset here. And I'm on a string of wild upset predictions. So do with that what you will. Uh, Connor, what is your prediction? Oh, I got you on mute. Sorry. I'm going to say that Creighton shoots sub 33% from three. And UConn, if if Klingon is healthy, and I still don't know if we we fully know whether he's going to be available for this game or not, then UConn wins this game by twelve. If Klingon isn't healthy, um, UConn by four. Okay, big swing there. Uh, it should be a really really fun game either way. And one of us will be right and one of us will be wrong. I'm looking forward to that. That's Connor Hope from Heat Check CVB. I'm Greg Waddell, Sleepers Media. Click subscribe on the Sleepers Media channel. We're doing recaps and previews for every big game this college basketball season.